Hey guys, welcome back to the new modeling tutorial from Hanora 3D. In today's video, let's see how to create this kind of cool shape on a curved surface. We also know that when we're going to make details on a curved surface, if we don't do that properly, the pinching effects will appear at the smoothing level. So, I think this video will help you to get an idea of how to create this kind of cool shape on a curved surface without pinching effects. Alright, before going through the video, I want to mention something, especially that we need to focus on this area because we can expect the pinch effects in this area. So now let's go to the make our model while keeping that in mind. Alright, now we have our basic object. So, according to this case, as you think, how many vertical ledges do we want at least to make our shape properly with the pinching effects? So, actually, we also know we can't give a straight answer for that because when you are going to across a process like this, there are two things we need to focus on at the beginning. Alright, first, let's focus on the circumference. We can see when we increase the radius the spacing between edges also increases. On the other hand, spacing also reduces with low circumference. So, what's the point we need to get this? Always remember to take sufficient edges when you work with curved surfaces. Alright, now let's see the second point while keeping that in mind. Okay, before make the details, collect pictures and videos as you can related to your model and then we need to study them clearly and try to capture all the details we are going to make. If you have a good reference collection, that means uh, we know step by step how to work start to end through our process. Alright, I think now you have an idea what's the second point. That means the polycon can impact directly on the details. So the second point is, if we have to add more details, we need a large poly count to reduce the pinch effects. By the way, remember, sometimes we don't need to make every detail on the base object, alright? Because we can use displacement map, normal map and bump map to add surface details without significantly increasing the poly count. Alright, now we know how to start our model to achieve a good result. However, there is one thing we should talk about. But this time, I think we can keep that up to the next. Okay then, let's move on to the next step. Okay guys, after preparing the base objects, focus on how the cylinder is placed and you can see there are three points that we need to consider in the second cylinder. In this situation, you can see we need three horizontal edge loops to connect these three points. However, we already have one and need another to connect this point. Actually, we don't need an edge loop for this one because when we connect these vertices to these vertices, you will see this area is clear. Ok guys, in our case, we have a new situation we should consider before going forward. Alright, look at this point and this point. So what are your thoughts on this point and why should we prioritize this? Ok, let me explain. For now, as we see, there is no special thing.
but when we extrude these edges to the inside now you can see these points are different a bit from other places because place like this we called edge poles all right most of the times we can see that four edges are connected to single vertex like this but sometimes we encounter five edges merging into a single vertex and three edges merging into a single vertex like this so furthermore three edges situation is called n poles and five edges situation is called e poles okay now we have to move on to the final stage and this is one of the most important levels of our journey first i will take a duplicate of our mesh because let's try to identify where the bad shade in and pins effects will appear All right. Now let's add supportive edges to preserve the sharpness of the curve and we are not going to change anything for the mesh. Just add only two supportive edges. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now we have to change the position of a few edges before adding the supportive edges. So, for that we can use the set flow tool and it helps us to adjust the selected edges of our mesh while keeping the shape. Alright, now we can see the clear difference between the mesh curves. So, let's see with the wireframe to get an idea further. Okay, as you think, why is this curve sharper more than this curve? Because in here, you can see there are two additional supportive edges to the midline. Okay guys, I believe you learned how to make a properly shape like this for your future modeling project and I hope so. You will stay with us for the more for more videos. Okay then, see you another 3ds Max video and don't forget to subscribe and engage with us. Bye for now.